As president of the University of Mary, I want to uh, tell you with great um, affection in my heart how much it's meant for us to have you here on our campus. I was traveling when you first came, and so I wasn't able to give you a proper welcome. But Jesus, of course, spent all of those hidden years in Nazareth before he went out to his public ministry. And I hope that these days, these weeks on our campus have been a Nazareth for you. I hope that you've been able to feel yourself with the, within the enclosure of the Blessed Mother's great love for you. And she fills you with courage as she filled the heart of Jesus to go out to the ends of the earth and to places that are dark, college campuses, except for this one, <laughs> to, to, to preach the gospel. And that requires great courage, but it requires first and foremost knowing that you're loved. And so I hope that these have been weeks of great joy and grace for you, and that you go away here with many, many, many memories of how deeply you're cared for by God. If you don't have enough memories, though, we're about to provide you with one. What is going to happen in just a moment is something which may only happen just this one time in all of your life, something you will be able to witness in person, which is very rare. And it's the kind of thing which can only be revealed to you, which can only be done by a successor of the apostles. And so this night, I would call upon the seventh bishop of the Diocese of Bismarck, the Most Reverend David D. Kagan, to provide you with some news. As I stand here at the altar of the Lord, I need to tell you that we have been examining very carefully a great deal of personal and testimonial information and evidence about our beloved Michelle Dupont. And with the uh, very capable and tireless assistance of Father Tom Grafsgaard, whom I asked to be here with us this evening, I have in discussions with him, in discussions with the Conference of Bishops and with an official from the, now the Dicastery for the Causes of Saints, I intend to formally open the diocesan phase of the investigation aiming and intending to thoroughly examine Michelle's life brief as it was, most edifying as it continues to be to so many, in order to determine the possibility of forwarding what we do here to the Holy See, asking them to examine what we provide for them in the hopes and with our fervent prayers that in time, she will be declared a saint of our Holy Catholic Church. You have no doubt seen the uh, very beautiful video that uh, has been produced regarding Michelle as a focus missionary. And by all means, keep that in mind, but know that there is much more to her life, both before and after her time as a focus missionary, which only reinforces what you saw. And so I thought it appropriate uh, to make this announcement here, and I ask uh, most especially for your continued prayers for our efforts. Michelle has not yet been declared a saint, and she would shrink from even me saying this in public. But her life is a life of Christ-like goodness, compassion, and the firmest faith 
I have ever encountered in any person. And so, as we conclude this Mass, as we depart, certainly in your private prayers, ask for her assistance, her intercession for you before the throne of grace. You will not be disappointed. So I want to wish all of you Godspeed. That's an old English term, and I don't <laughs> usually use those, but it's appropriate. And know that our prayers go with you as well. I thank you for your faith, for your fidelity, and I thank you most especially for your willingness to bring Jesus Christ to others. May God bless you all. Bishop Kagan, thank you. Thank you on behalf of all the priests of the Diocese of Bismarck. I serve on the Board of Directors of FOCUS as well on behalf of the Fellowship of Catholic University Students. Thank you for opening the diocesan phase of the investigation into the life, the deeds, and the holiness of Michelle Dupont.